One of my absolute favorite types of photography is underwater photos. And I think I've just been gravitated towards this because I love being outside. I love swimming. I love spending time in the ocean and capturing it is definitely something that I enjoy more than most types of photography. Now, underwater photography can be very expensive. If you are choosing to shoot with a mirrorless or DSLR camera, that will then require housing. Housings can cost upwards of 15, 16, hundred US dollars, you know, and then there's all the added expenses on top of that lenses. So one way to tackle this is to use a really affordable camera, like a action camera, specifically a GoPro. There's plenty of options on the market. Definitely be sure to check out some of our other videos if you're new to action cameras, but I'm sure many of you are acquainted with this style of photography. So today I want to chat through seven tips on how you can improve your underwater photography with a GoPro. So let's get stuck into it. For those of you that are new around here, my name is Jake Rich. I'm a travel filmmaker and photographer from Australia. So at the top of today's list, I want to run you through some settings. So if you're thinking about going out on your adventure this afternoon or today, or you're currently on the adventure and you're like, damn, how can I make these photos look better? Well, you can quickly jump in and dial these settings into your camera. Now, the first thing I recommend doing is shooting in burst as opposed to taking single images, as opposed to constantly having to click the shutter each time you want to capture an image. Um, in photo mode on GoPro, at the very bottom, you can click that big t tag. This will happen on the Hero 8, Hero, Hero, from the Hero 8 onwards, this is available. And you can see you've got a number of different modes. You've got photo, live burst, burst or night photo. Obviously we are shooting in the day, so let's avoid night photo, but let's choose the burst mode. Now in burst, you have a range of different options. You can click on the burst and you can click the little pencil icon to the right of it and you can dial through some settings. The first of which I like to set is the output. Now basically what you want to do is you want to preserve your images. If you're brand new to GoPro photography, you probably are just shooting in a standard output, which is only going to be giving you JPEGs. Now, what I will mention for this setting is if you have the Hero 9 and you're not too crazy fussed about editing the content, the raw content, then I would recommend choosing the standard output as a JPEG because the processor on the Hero 9 is much slower than the Hero 10. Hero 8 you'll be fine, but processor on the Hero 9 is much slower, so I recommend just outputting JPEGs. However, for those of you who love editing photos as much as I do, then I recommend choosing RAW. So this is going to give you an output of both JPEG and RAW. Now the reason why I don't recommend doing that on the Hero 9 is because it takes up to 45 seconds to process those images. The more photos that you choose in the burst, the longer it takes to process the images. And when you're free diving, you either got to be a really good swimmer or you're going to get really impatient about while the photos are being processed and you're out in the middle of the ocean. So I recommend choosing JPEG and RAW on the Hero 10 because you can edit the JPEGs on your phone. You can then further edit those RAW images in Lightroom. More on that later. However, choosing your burst rate is obviously up to you, but I like to choose um, 10 photos over three seconds. Now it's the top one on the list. You can also choose like 10 over one or five over one or three over one. I like to choose 10 photos over three seconds because often in three seconds, like it's not a crazy amount of time, but it's more time than one second. And when you're capturing say wildlife or even if you're capturing yourself diving, you know, a lot can be achieved in three seconds from like either going down, you'll see the frames will differ a lot more over three seconds than they will over one. It's gonna give you a little bit more variety to work with when you come to edit and choose the best actual photo. So my my recommendation is 10 over three in the raw output. All the other protune settings, I leave. I do not touch until I am very well acquainted with the environment. So the first thing I recommend is shooting in burst 10 over three and starting on auto. Tip number two is really about assessing the conditions. And to do this, we always dive and we always, I guess, location scout our underwater photos with a face mask. So before we just start shooting by the, like shooting from the hip, I guess the phrase is called, 
pew, 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 shooting from the hip, we dive, we go and we free dive and we check where the light sources are. Uh, I think one of the most memorable photos I've taken is this one. And this photo came about from first doing the cliff jump. If you know Milos in Greece, then you will know this spot, but doing the cliff jump and then the way that you exit out of the water is through this tiny little cave. Now, once we had the mask on and we could look underwater, we could really assess the composition of the underwater landscape and I think it was at that point that we realized hey this is the perfect place to take photos there is light coming into the hole um, of the landscape which creates this really beautiful composition so tip number two is to use a face mask to assess the underwater landscape it's really important to spend time underwater to find where the you know, where the best photos can be taken. And again, this just, this comes down to being comfortable as a diver. And I would also recommend like really long fins, like free diving fins. Or if you're a diver, then put on your um, oxygen tank and go down and start checking out the shelf, start checking out what looks good, start checking out the reef structures, start checking out what is cool underwater. <laughs> tip is purely related to the way that we feel uh, and our confidence in the ocean. So tip number three is to improve your breathing, is improve your lung capacity and to improve your free diving. The better you are and the more confident you are holding your breath underwater, the more time you will have for composing your images, the more comfortable you will be in taking photos. This one is a timely thing. Don't think that in one day you can jump in the ocean and get amazing underwater content. This really does take time to master. I think if you are serious about this, there's plenty of schools that can teach you breath work for, for diving. I would seek them out. I would take the class and take the course in free diving. Breath work is hugely important. So seek some professional advice, but um, yeah, just practice diving day after day and holding your breath longer and longer and it will eventually expand your lungs and give you more confidence at free diving. Whilst you have your mask on, tip number four in this video is to start to assess the lighting conditions. Now, if the water is murky or if this like if it's an overcast day, you're not going to be able to see those light rays penetrate through the surface of the ocean and in my opinion, get as good shots. I think you really need nice lighting both above like in the sun to penetrate the ocean and to create really beautiful light rays. So one thing that we always look for when we are diving or we are swimming and trying to find really beautiful composition underwater is for the light. We look to see where that light is piercing through. Um, a really beautiful example of this is this image in the cenote. So you'll notice like we've tried to take this image on a number of different occasions, but this image only really works Parisian, <laughs> the Parisian sounds. This image only really works when you have full sun, which is creating the light rays under the into the cenote. If you're jumping into the water and you're trying to change your settings on your camera, but there's no light penetrating the water, then I don't believe you're going to get as, as great a photo as you're not. I've tried. So yeah, definitely think about really aligning the light that's shining through. Another tip that I would recommend that I generally enjoy is if it comes to sunrise or sunset and you're noticing the light rays penetrate through the surface of the ocean on an angle, I've always found it really cool to get below the subject. So let's say a friend or a marine life is swimming. Um, if you get below the subject and you position that subject in between the light source um, and yourself, the photographer, I've found some really beautiful images in this space. It can either create silhouettes or underwater, it can create these really beautiful light cascades. So I think that's something to think about is also shooting into the light underwater because it definitely creates some beautiful content. The next tip on lighting is definitely directed towards the divers out there. So if you are using something like the GoPro Hero 10 and you're going pretty deep, I would definitely recommend creating a dual mount and having some kind of LED light to also add, like just enhance, you know, what you're seeing. If you've, if you've ever seen effervescent corals or 
um, is that even the right, <laughs> right word ever? Like illume, like, you know, fish which have that, those scales which are enhanced by the light, then I think it can be really cool to also add something like, well, you know, like one of these, like just a little LED that you can click on. This is, this is waterproof, this one. However, it's a bit bright at the moment. Ah, something like that. Okay. <laughs> so this, this would be a setup that I would also kind of recommend. So you have your camera rolling here and then you just have like this Zeus light here. Now, one thing I'm going to mention is that I've never tested this. I've never tested what this Zeus light is for diving. So maybe check out some other videos on YouTube or hit me up in a couple of weeks time once I have tested it or <laughs> ask me a question on in the comments and I might be able to give you a response to it. However, there are other options other than this GoPro light, but I definitely know and I've seen in documentaries that when you light the coral, it can look so much better if you are a diver. Um, yeah, but for photos, maybe it will, it will be good. Um, but for video, this is definitely a video more than a photo hack. So yeah, test it out. Light is important for your composition. Now, tip number five is to learn how to edit. Most photos that you see shared on social media that you probably lust over, that you probably in, are inspired by when it comes to underwater content are edited. They are <laughs> extremely edited. It should be no illusion that photo underwater photos are extremely edited. And I think one of the most popular questions I get asked in terms of my underwater photography is like, what filters were you using? Were you using red or blue filters like with the photos? And my answer is always the same. It's no, I, I haven't ever used like, a red filter or an underwater dive filter. This, yes, can be really valuable to your content. I'm not saying that it isn't. I, however, just opt for the easier route of choosing to capture the content as I see it on the GoPro as it is, keeping it super simple so I can really focus on the other elements like natural lighting, free diving, these things, which I think may be more important than slapping on the dive filter, or just things that I choose to prioritize. Then, after that, um, you know, focusing on editing the photo in post-production. Now, what I will mention with editing is if you are interested in learning how to edit your photos and take them from, you know, maybe what you see or what you're currently capturing, which the greens and the blues just aren't exactly where you'd like them, then we highly recommend that you join us in our upcoming Action Camera Masterclass. We have a four weeks live uh, masterclass, which will take you hopefully from fairly basic skills in editing to much more advanced editing. We show you how we go about creating these underwater photos. We also analyze, critically analyze the composition. The masterclass isn't just about photo editing, it's about video editing, storytelling, and a whole lot more. So if you are interested, I highly recommend that you check the top link of the description. Now, if you're watching this video and it's in the back end of 2022 or it's 2023 or it's sometime in the future, then check out our on-demand version because, or just, hit up our website because we may be running another live masterclass soon. As I said in the earlier tips, just start with auto. This is fundamental for beginners, but when you're ready to develop that photo or take it the next step, there are extra pro tune settings that you can play around with to really improve what you're capturing. Now, Something that I recommend doing is playing around with your shutter speed if you are in low lighting environments. So essentially having the shutter open for longer will let more light into the sensor. So if you are diving in a cenote, for example, and it's not super bright, but you are getting some interesting light coming from the top, you might want to have the shutter open for longer. This is extremely interesting and it's a creative um, I think a creative feat because having the shutter open for longer whilst you're performing an action is going to create blur is essentially going to create motion blur creatively this can be really awesome if you're capturing a burst with a long shutter then you might be able to capture an image like this this is exactly what what, what, what we did um, whilst we were playing around in the cenotes so yeah but then start to you know start to change your minimum ISO Essentially, the ISO is also a way of bumping up the amount of light in the image. However, it does affect the noise. So again, if you're not too worried about having, you know, a noisy image, then I would recommend like lifting your ISO up as opposed to having it at 100, which you would normally set for full blaring 
daylight. So yeah, play around with your ISO and your shutter speed and experiment. Now, unfortunately, not all action cameras offer this device. And what I mean by that is like, domes are mostly designed for GoPro. Right here, this is the Teleson dome for the GoPro Hero 9 or 10. The GoPro Hero 9 and or 10 fits in the dome like that and it just snaps on like so. I highly recommend this dome and one of the most commonly asked questions we get in, in regards to like shooting with this product is also the water droplets which are commonly found on the lens. So a product which we have tested is this Rain-X, which is a plastic water repellent. Uh, had mixed results. Don't always use it. Something that we recommend doing is just dunking the dome underwater before you shoot. So if you're shooting in bursts, before you click the shutter, dunk the dome into the water, then hit the burst mode shutter so that essentially the water droplets will repel off the dome lens and you'll get the cleanest image. Other points to note when shooting with the dome are to just again think about your light source. If you're shooting directly into the sun you will get weird refractions coming from both here and then into the lens. It's really important to not scratch this front lens. Keep this as clean as possible because anything that is essentially on this piece of plastic will be in your image, burnt into your image. And then the other thing is just thinking again about the environment. Often it's not about, you know, the best photos come from really clear still water. They don't come from murky um, or agitated seabeds or sediment filled oceans. Think about shooting in, you know, really, clear water um, for the best results. You know, even if you're deep into the middle of the ocean and it's a nice sunny day, you'll get some really great dome shots if you're in a pool, if you are in a creek um, and the water is nice and clear. Definitely check out this video up here next if you want to learn more about shooting, how we shoot with the dome. Um, guys, thank you so much for checking out today's video. If you have enjoyed it, punch the thumbs up button. If you're new around here, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next upload. Ciao. Peace.